Okay, let's be honest, no one really finds USB-C chargers all that interesting. Most people are just looking for a charger that's reliable and fast enough for their devices on a daily basis, and they just move on and don't care too much about it. But I guess we are not most people. And over the past couple of months, we have tested around 30 of the most popular and capable chargers on the market, split them across sort of these three top categories, and you'll have them sort of pinned on the timeline below if you want to jump around. And we'll have a final part of the video at the very end where we focus on the Pixel 9 Pro XL weird 37 watt charging as well as some other tips for other devices that are a little weird because you know it wouldn't be a USB-C video if it was sort of straightforward and easy to understand for literally everyone. Links for every product we talked about in this video will be in the description down below as well as any written form articles that get put up on Android Authority. As the name very well suggests the first category is focusing on the basics and this is for pretty much anyone that just want a charger that's small, powerful enough to charge most small devices, only one at a time, without breaking the bank. For that, our pick is the Anchor Nano 30 Watt. Now, sure, you can find cheaper options that offer a variety of compromises, anything from being physically larger and lacking USB-C power delivery, but the Nano 30 Watt has all the essentials to punch in way above what it looks like. It costs right around the $24 mark, and for that, you can charge most phones, tablets, and even some thin and light laptops at close to their maximum speed. For example, the S23 Ultra can charge at up to 43 watts, but that's only true for a short burst in ideal conditions. Quite quickly, it will drop to around 35 watts, and the Nano 30 Watt can give it 28 watts of juice, which results in only a 10 minute longer 0 to 100 charge time at 1 hour and 14 minutes. But maybe you want a little bit more. Maybe you want a charger that's a jack of all trades. Maybe you're willing to spend a little bit more money to get a better and step up your charging experience, and for that, we recommend recommend the Anchor Prime 67 Watt with an honorable mention to the Ugreen 65 Watt Nexode Pro. They're both really compact and feel substantial in a good way, but the Anchor has the collapsible prongs that we really enjoy for this particular form factor. They both have good USB PPS support and USB power delivery support, so anything from phones, Nintendo Switches and Steam Decks are no problem for these guys. Both of them come with two USB-C ports and one USB-A port, meaning that if you plan on traveling with either of these to charge, say, a phone, a tablet, and a watch at the same time, you will not be disappointed. If you're just using a single device, that will get you the full 65 watts out of the USB-C port, so you can charge most smartphones at their maximum speed, and of course, this will cover even more laptops. And if you're wondering why we ended up preferring the Anchor to the Ugreen, was because the collapsible prongs are a pretty big deal, and the efficiency is substantially better on the Anchor, making this guy run hotter and consume more power to charge your devices slower, which in my book is always a losing combination. And all of this brings us to my favorite category, the beast. Is, is pretty much where you come if you want to live the USB-C dream, and if you want a charger that's actually uh, gonna charge everything, and no questions asked, you just plug it in and it will work. And my favorite pick out of all of them is the Satoshi 165 watt. I bring this guy with me everywhere. And apart from the blindingly bright blue LED that I blocked immediately, it's as good as it gets. It comes in at around $120, which is uh, not cheap, and it is the most versatile charger that we've tested and the second most efficient one coming in at 94.1% efficiency. It's fully USB-C, which I love. It can output 100 watts on a single port, which pretty much covers every device. If you go on a trip, you can charge everything all at the same time with a 60, 45, 30, 30 watt split, which is a really great and convenient split if you plan on charging, say, a laptop, a tablet, a phone, and something else all at the same time, or even better, if you bring one of the Qi 2 foldable stands to charge multiple devices from just one port, you can just charge, I don't know, everything from yourself and your partner if everything is dying all at the same time, all from one charger, which I just found really great. It has a removable cable design, which can help you bring the charger closer to you without the need of multiple long USB-C cables. And if you're in the US, you don't have to deal with the charger being too heavy and removing itself from the wall out which certain models have done in the past. Oh, and if you're traveling, I just found it super convenient to just get a different figure eight cable and replace it and have a native sort of cable and charger without having to deal with wall adapters. Our runner up is the Anchor Prime 100 watt. It's a more
compact and more affordable charger coming in at $85. It also has a 100 watt output of a single port and good efficiency values at 92.8%. For charging multiple devices, it's simply not as powerful, but more than enough for a lot of people with a 65-35 watt split between the USB-C ports. Anchor's charger lineup is definitely confusing. These two guys, we tested the 2023 Prime 100 watt and the newer 2024 Prime 100 watt. They're sold still side by side. They cost exactly the same. They look very similar and um, the newer one is uh, worse in all the tests that we did. It lacks a mode that splits the power better with 76 watts and a one device in the USB-A port, but that's kind of situational at best. But the efficiency on our unit is 2% worse, which I found to be a pretty big drop for um, something that should be at least the same or better. And the same sort of difference was found on the newer charging stations. They still are pretty good and they're still very efficient at 92 point something percent. I'll put the values on screen, but they aren't as efficient as the older models that we tested, which I found definitely interesting. And the king of all efficiency that we tested, the desktop 240 watt charger, that was still the best at 94.7%. We reached out to Anchor for a comment and we still haven't heard back but if we do we sort of will put something on the website and on the comments or maybe even on the video our final two honorable mentions go to the Basia scan 3 pro desktop charger these chargers names are uh, catchy this guy is 80 dollars and it supports everything and the kitchen sink it's a uh, very very good pps support 100 watt max but you know it doesn't have a removable cable and it's only two usb-c ports and two usb-a ports so not really ideal but if you are fine with that power split and the non-removable cable excellent efficiency and a really easy recommendation for a ton of people our last is really the newer Anker 200 watt six port desktop charging station. With six ports, it's not industry leading when it comes to the efficiency, but it is the maximum amounts of ports in a charger that we have tested that still doesn't compromise in anything major to achieve it. We tested a Satoshi six port 200 watt. It wasn't so good. It's sort of plugging and unplugging devices caused all sorts of confusions for that charger, which, you know, with six ports you probably are going to be doing that a lot detachable cable good enough efficiency and just overall slick looks for 80 dollars 85 dollars i think it's an easy recommendation and all this brings us to the caveat section and you know it's a serious caveat section because i have my phone in my hand to really not mess up some of the intricacies of the particular scenarios that i'm going to be teaching you or letting you know of and we'll start off with the pixel 9 pro xl the way most phones do fast charging is they keep the voltage relatively low let's say 11 volts and then they crank up the current they crank up the amperage and then you get more watts because volts times amps equals uh, watts at the other side and the way google are doing it is very unusual they are reaching 37 watts with 20 volts. This pretty much creates a scenario where unless you're picking the Satoshi 165 watt, the Basius 100 watt, and um, the Ugreen 160 watt, none of the other chargers that we tested will reach 37 watts with the Pixel 9 Pro XL because it charges using PPS and 20 volt. We've had other chargers, like none of the Anker stuff does PPS up to 20 volt. They only do up to 11 volts, which is much more common. So I don't know what to think of this. I don't, I don't know why Google decided to use this particular mode, but I would just wish it was more transparent and you wouldn't have to learn this through a post on Reddit after the phone launch. So uh, I guess now you're warned. If you want fast charging, Pick one of the ones that I said just a second ago and you should be good to go. The second thing is, it's kind of sad and good and bad at the same time that a lot of these chargers these days are pretty much computers. And the way you can get the best charging speeds is by the charger, cable and device having a nice handshake between them and agreeing on a particular power output. And I've seen it 
occasionally happen with certain multi-port adapters where if you plug in a 65 watt device first and then you plug in a second device that can go up to 45 watts let's say a samsung super fast charging 2.0 device like an s23 ultra you can have a scenario where the charger cable and device won't agree that the phone can reach 45 watts and it will settle for only up to 30 watts. And the only thing you can do is just plug and unplug in a different order or just plug the phone by itself first. This doesn't really happen with the Satoshi 165 watt, for example, or bricks that have enough sort of headroom to go above what you need to provide for a device. So that's really just something to keep in mind. For example, the 65 watt bricks aren't really my favorite for just that reason. And finally, just a general sort of preference thing that I found with testing 30 bricks. I kind of enjoy the extending lead cable with a charging brick closer to me. I think the design is much more versatile than having the charger on the wall and just buying multiple long USB-C cables for just a multitude of reasons. Like multiple long cables also use a lot of space in my bag so if I'm traveling I'd just much rather take one extending lead and the charger itself and multiple small USB-C cables. That's also good for efficiency since even a good long cable can lose up to 2% efficiency compared to a small tiny one so that's more power going into your device and not just into thin air. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Hopefully you learned something and you can make an educated choice when it comes to buying a new adapter but um yeah hopefully manufacturers will stop playing with uh, voltages and amperages and just agree on a standard of sorts because um this is sometimes ridiculous that i have to make a 15 minute video to kind of cover all the details just to recommend a charger when in the past they came in the box which wasn't great for the environment but um i guess you could always count on those being fast enough okay thank you for watching and um i hope you have a good day